change some of the properties dynamically via our code. All right? And that's where the fun really gets started, and that's where we get to the code behind file. So, here we have our calendar, our new calendar. I'll run this. And now it's going to look different. Looks like that. What if we wanted a button to make this calendar disappear? All right. Starting to sound like a magician here. You know, not, not my sleeves. Now, if we think about it, that is a behavior, right? I'm going to have a button. When I press the button, the calendar is going to disappear. All right? That kind of stuff needs to be in the code behind file. Because remember, again, the user interface aspect of it is going to be in the ASPX file. Any behavior or processing associated with it is going to be in the code behind file. So let's go and let's create a button and let's be able to show and hide the calendar. All right. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to create, pull a button over here. Put it there. I'm going to double click on that button. All right. And when I did that, it took me to the script. All right. It took me to the code behind because that's processing. What do I want to do? I want to make this guy disappear. What's the name of this guy? The name of this guy is Calendar 1. I was a little lazy and I didn't change its name, but, yeah, here we go, the ID, calendar one. That's the name I'm going to use to when I refer to this calendar. All right? What do I want to do with calendar one? Well, if you notice, I want to change one of its properties. Remember I said the code behind is responsible for accessing and manipulating the properties of the different components on the page. If I look here, there is a visible property that's set to true. If I make that visible property false, guess what? It disappears. <coughs> so what I want to do is, when I press this button, I want to say calendar one dot visible equals false. All right. And now if I run it, I have my button, I click that, disappears, click that again, makes it disappear again. <laughs> now the button shouldn't just say button, right? It should say something more meaningful. Uh, that's another thing. I, I guess now is as good a time to say it as opposed to after you've turned your first assignment in and, and I've gotten all annoyed and fired up. <laughs> Remember, your job is to create good, completed web pages. All right? Um, therefore, a button that's simply labeled button isn't good. All right? Now, in examples, just because, you know, I get caught up in things and all that, I, you know, I may uh, uh, at times neglect to you know, dot the I's and cross the T's because I'm illustrating points and I'm not meant to create a completed web page. But your job is to create completed web pages. So a lot of times I have students in this class do pages that are functional, but they don't look like completed web pages at all. It'd be like just like 
some text boxes in the middle of the screen and you know you click on the button you get some kind of answer but nothing's labeled or anything like that all right um, don't do that keep in mind that everything you turn in should look like a completed web page so I'll try to do better here and I'll go in and I'll change the text of this to say disappear or hide I like that um, how could I make one to show? Well, this would be pretty easy, right? Let me go in. I'll change this one to show. I'll do just the opposite. So notice what I'm doing. In the code behind, I'm manipulating those controls that I put on the ASPX page. So I got this calendar control, all right, and I can change properties to it. I could change the width if I wanted it to. I could have a make bigger, make smaller, and based on that, you know, increase the width or decrease the width, all right. I could change any of the properties. Any of the properties that I set in the property builder or through the code I can manipulate through the code behind. That allows me to make the page interactive and dynamic and do all sorts of great things. So now we can go and do this. All right. Show. This is a little awkward though, right? Because it's showing the hide and show button at the, uh, all the time. What should it do? It should switch the text on above and set it on. Yeah, it should switch the text. We could, we could actually approach this a couple different ways. And we might as well do it both ways, right? Just, just to illustrate. All right? What are the two ways we could do this? So when you click on the calendar, it disappears. Repeat that, please. That sounds confusing to me. <laughs> when it's when it's true, it would say hide. When it's false, it'll say show. Okay. How many buttons? One. One. Okay. We could do it in. We could do it with two buttons, though, right? How could we do it with two buttons? Hide the button. Hide the button. Yeah. Hide the hide the the other button. All right. Or we could make a smart button that change the label and change the behavior. Let's do it both ways. All right, might as well. For, we'll do the first one first. Uh, well, obviously we're going to do the first one first, right? <laughs> we, we did the second one first, and it would be the first one. We'll do the two button approach first. All right? So the two button approach, we're going to start out, and the hide button is going to be visible, and the show button is going to be invisible. So I'll go in and make the show button invisible. When I click on the hide button, I make the calendar invisible. I'm going to make the show button visible. And I'm going to make the hide button invisible. And what am I going to do if they click the show button? Well, if I click the show button, I'm going to make the show button invisible. I'm going to make the hide button visible again. So now, only the hide button shows. I click that, only the show button shows. All right. And that works, and 
really nothing wrong with that. But we could also come up with another button that does show and hide. All right. So let's go here. I'll put another button down here. And what's the text of this button going to be initially? All right. What do I do if I click on that button? Is it false? Pardon me? Visible would be false. And button. What's the button name? Button, button name is simply button three. Okay. Yeah. To what? Yeah. Really? So I go there, it changes that to show, right? But I click show and it doesn't do anything. You need an if statement to see what state You need an if statement to see what, what state it is. We, we can't, we're, if we're going to make this button do two things, we, we have to check to see which one of the two things we want to do. So we want to take and we want to flip if the calendar is already visible. The, the code that we have works if calendar one is already visible. We want to set the button to show and the calendar to true. Otherwise, We want to do the opposite. And, in fact, we want to make, we might as well go in for good measure, fix the other buttons too. So this is an if statement, syntax in C sharp, and one nice thing about the syntax of C sharp is it resembles most other programming languages, unlike VB that only resembles VB. Um, if calendar visible, why don't I have to say equals true? Because it's just a state of... Because it's already a boolean, right? Remember, your condition in an if statement needs to be a boolean. It needs to be something that's either true or false. And calendar.visible is already a boolean, so I don't need to say. I could say equals true, and it would look like this. But this is equivalent. Notice when you compare, you use the two equal signs in C sharp, not the one equal sign. So, if the calendar visible is true, if that condition is true, I'm going to do this. What am I doing? I'm going to set the button 3 text to show. I'm going to make it invisible, and I'm going to make button two, I'm sorry, button one visible false, button two visible true, and then I do just the opposite if it started out when it was invisible. 
So we go here. And we can click hide. That gets rid of it. We can click show. I don't understand if you were on a blank page, why couldn't you just say visible true and it would have shown it? Why did you need the F statement? Because this code has to work whether the whether the calendar is true or whether the calendar is visible or not. Okay. If it's visible, we make it invisible. If it's invisible, we make it visible. So you're right. The initial condition is going to be that the calendar is true, is visible. All right? But this code doesn't just process the initial condition. This code processes every time you press that button. So it pro this same code processes it the first time, the second time, the third time. Another way to look at it. What if we switched it so that the calendar was initially not true, not visible? Then our code would still work, right? Because we, that button would then say, um, you know, we might make a, have to make a couple other adjustments, but that button would then work because if it was visible, it would show it. If it was invisible, it would hide it. That's a rule of thumb then on that Boolean condition or dot visible or if it's, if it's one or the other, then you would need an if statement to... I, I don't. I don't want to generalize. If, if we're writing, a, if we're writing one button that sort of toggles something, then yes, it needs to handle both conditions. Okay. Let's be complete here and put the code in here. So that we truly handle the text for both the buttons. So if I click hide, change that. Doesn't matter which button I click, both of them work. Okay. Now, the important thing in, uh, of this class isn't how to show and hide a calendar. All right. The important thing of this class is to introduce the fact that there are these ASP.NET controls that get translated to a whole mess of HTML and CSS and JavaScript, potentially. Sometimes there's, there's more of a one-to-one -one correspondence. That one line of HTML, or one, one line of an ASP.NET control maybe only translates to one line of HTML. But that ASP.NET control translates to HTML. All right, so we notice that calendar control translates to an HTML table with rows and all this other good stuff in it. That's part one of this examples lesson. Part two of this example's lesson is that we can programmatically manipulate the attributes of those controls. All right? So we can write code to based on pressing a button or whatever to do something where we show or hide the calendar. All right? In this case. We could just as well make it to change the width of the calendar. We could have instructions in here that when you click this button, it makes the width 50% of the screen. When you click this button, it makes the width 100% of the screen. So one thing, if you, if you finish this, uh, the first assignment and you want to play with something, maybe take this example and try to change it, try to modify it so that it resizes the calendar. Instead of visible and invisible, it makes a, a tiny calendar or a giant calendar. All right, try playing with that. That would be a good exercise. Are there any questions at this point? Yes? This is going to get complicated. <laughs> the question or the class? The, the question. <laughs> okay. Um, having taken intro to C Sharp, mm -hmm. we know that when we debug, it compiles. In this case, it's not doing that. It's just using the C, the C Sharp programming to create the HTML or the script or whatever it needs to do to respond to that code. Is that accurate? No. So um, yeah. We'll go over this in more detail, but just to answer your question, for example, let's say I wasn't too sharp today 
and I let's say I got this statement wrong. All right, when I click the show button. All right, and I went and run ran this. Actually, what it was doing there was compiling. And I go and click the show button. Hide works. I click the show button, nothing happens. Ooh. That's not good. Alright. And I wonder what went wrong. What I can do is I can put in a breakpoint there. And I can go in and run this. And I can go and see statement by statement, what happens. Oh, look, I execute that statement. Oh, that's the wrong thing. It should say true. All right. So, yeah, it does compile it, and, and by running it in debug mode, you can actually zoom in on it. Th does that address your question? Or? The only other question, I, and I think it's obvious, that it's compiling on the server side. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right, because the server does everything it can to produce a web page. Once it's done, it's an HTML page that the client's running. All right, because we are in development mode and our client is our server, we're able to go in and debug like this. We will go over, if, if someone didn't really catch what I was talking about there, we'll go over this more um, in future classes. One last thing, it's important for you to zip up your entire folder and turn it in. So when I upload this, I'm going to go and zip this up and upload it so that you can review this example and play with it and try to make the calendars bigger and smaller. All right. That's all I have for today. We'll see you in lab. Does anyone have a thumb drive I can borrow? Uh, yeah, well, you need one. Just uh, like for 10 minutes for me to copy files from here to, yeah. uh, to my machine. Uh,